Hello everyone, I welcome you all to another video by Legacy IAS where we are going to talk about the entire comparison of the constitutional systems that we have in India vis-a-vis -vis our new found friend France. The cooperation between India and France has been growing over the years, especially in matters of defense, foreign policy and also societal matters. Now, in this background, if we also add the constitutional requirement, which is very important for your GS paper too, but even otherwise for a good understanding of this friendship that is there between the two countries, where all are the future areas of cooperation and collaboration, an understanding of that can be very well developed through this particular discussion of comparison of constitutional scheme between India and France. So in this regard, we'll start by discussing what are the important influences that the French constitution has had on the Indian constitution. In this regard, India has borrowed the principles which are there in the French constitution, starting from making India a republic. Now, we all know that the Indian president the executive head of the state is elected. So, and as an elected head of the state, India is actually represented as a republic. So this concept of having an elected head of the state, even though it's by indirect election, this concept is something that has been taken from the French constitution. We borrowed these very, very important principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity from the French constitution and inserted into our preamble. The preamble, which is the foundation, the philosophy of the constitution, that reflects these fundamental values of liberty, equality, and fraternity. And India has really strongly supported this by mentioning them in not just our basic philosophy, but in several articles of the constitution, including fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy. All right, a lot of policies have been framed, keeping these ideas in mind, and they really form the cornerstone of India's domestic, foreign, as well as constitutional principles and philosophy. So in that respect, we are greatly indebted to France for helping us or rather providing the world with these three particular principles. In fact, the French Revolution is something that is credited for such a thing. So we have important features being borrowed from them and that also brings us to the discussion whereby we talk about what are the similarities between the Indian constitution and the French constitution. The first is that both the countries have a written constitution, all right? For India, it was a requirement, particularly because we had a turbulent independence period, a, a you know disturbing partition, and also the reorganization of states along linguistic lines. So for a lot of reasons, we were kind of compelled to have a written constitution, and France also has a similar written constitution. In both these countries, the prime minister is the one who is appointed by the president. So the president is the one. In India, of course, we have a parliamentary form of government. So the real power authority lies with the prime minister. So in that sense, the president is the one who appoints the prime minister based on the majority party. And the same is the case in France, whereby the person appointed as a prime minister needs to enjoy the confidence of the house. Alright, so this is an important component where having the support and the confidence of the house representing the democratic ideals is something that's truly held as very important and similarity between Indian and French constitution. The term of the president of both the Indian and the French constitution is the same and fixed for a period of five years. It of course can be shortened in the event of death, resignation or removal. All right. But after five years, the person can, of course, be re-elected, but you need to have that election. That term of presidentship is only for five years. The other similarities include that the lower house can pass a censure motion. There is a concept of having a responsible government in both the countries. So the fact that you are having a prime minister who is enjoying or staying in office till that person enjoys the confidence of the house is also creating a sense of accountability. 
all right an authority that is based on a majority and confidence so in that respect also if the lower house does not uh, you know support that particular person as a prime minister or the government for that matter so such censure motion can be introduced or passed against the prime minister and his council of ministers which would imply that they must resign from office so it is all a part of the sense of democratic principles ideals and something where the uh, accountability of both the government as well as the prime minister especially in the lower house is basically very very important in both the countries we also have a provision whereby the amendments that are to be made in both the countries require 60% of majority all right in both the indian as well as the french constitution a basic requirement of 60% of majority is essential to bring in any kind of important changes that are to be in the constitution now both these countries have a very important provision of emergency in the constitution of course india the indian constitution has been made with a lot of caution and the provision of emergency has been brought in to kind of even create a provision when there are some unforeseen situations in the country which can happen politically or financially for that matter all right so in that sense this is also a provision which is mentioned in the french constitution and happens to be an important point of similarity between the indian and the french constitution both the citizens the citizens of both these countries are actually treated equally in the eyes of law so there is this principle and emphasis on rule of law non discrimination all right and here a lot of importance is being given to the citizens of that particular country so that you actually are not uh, giving importance to a lot of identities of caste religion language culture etc but primarily on treating them according to merit but having said that there are of course a lot of differences between the two countries and the constitutional systems of the two countries first is that france is actually the only democratic or the french constitution is the only democratic constitution which is basically based on the principle of supremacy of the executive so here in a presidential form of government in a, the way in which you are giving so much of importance to the executive head of the state it's actually very unknown the way in which you are not having any kind of checks and balances even in a democratic country that is a very interesting unique or rather an unusual feature of any democratic constitution because you generally kind of try to limit the power all right not have the executive head have unlimited powers for that matter here if you see that the prime minister is actually assisting the president it's a very big and important feature uh, that is very unique to the french uh, constitution that you have the prime minister actually assisting the president even though it is not a parliamentary form of government whereby the prime minister is the one who is you know kind of aiding and advising the president even there also pre president is not assisting or rather one post is not assisting the other you could have had equal positions also but here you are actually looking at the french president assisting a french prime minister assisting the president so that is a very distinct feature of this particular constitution also the parliament of france does not have the supreme power with regards to formulating laws all right uh, uk for that matter is known for parliamentary sovereignty parliamentary supremacy for that matter india is known for parliamentary sovereignty whereby the laws made by the parliament unless they kind of uh, you know disturb the foundation principle of the constitution kind of are held supreme in that sense and are the only authority for making important laws for the entire country also another point of difference is the term for which this president of france is uh, coming to power it is the, it is coming for a fixed term this particular term is very very different initially it was 9 years later it was reduced to 7 years and at present we are looking at 5 years so there has been a gradual reduction in the number of years that was been given to the president 
over the years through globalization and through interaction with other governments and countries there has been a realization that probably this needs to be reduced and five years is sufficient but imagine a time where ten, nine years already are being given to one person to stay in power that's a really long time that we're talking about it only goes on to show the importance that is being given to this particular executive to the supremacy of the executive and how important the president is in this particular country all right so here we are also have some other differences like the french president and the prime minister are having some functional differences all right so there is not really a division of power per se but definitely a division of functions whereby if we look at the french president he is the one or she is the one for that matter responsible for dealing with issues of foreign policy as well as those having national or domestic concerns all right so very important decisions with regards to french president to the indian uh, other constitutions of the world as well as the national uh, issues are all the responsibility of the french president but if you look at the prime minister he is having to look at the daily routine functions of very local domestic issues not national issues for that matter even on the domestic front the ones which are of really national importance they are the ones that are being taken up by the president but prime minister looks at the very local domestic issues all right the day to day routine functions so you are looking at even if there is a division of functions the important functions are being definitely associated or given to the president of france the rights which are mentioned in the french constitution all these rights are actually natural and they belong to every human by birth that is again not the case with the indian constitution all right some of the rights are given uh, for citizens some of the rights are given for even people who acquire citizenship so a lot of these things in terms of the nature of the rights what kind of rights are given are there natural rights all right the the nature of the right is also depending upon the nature of the person in question so a uh, lot of these things are kind of over differed and uh, here you know every all these rights are given to every human being from birth so these are the kind of differences which we basically see between the two constitutions one very important difference is dual citizenship that is present in the french constitution india has is known for single citizenship here we are trying to promote fraternity and brotherhood and not having let's say a region based citizenship also it's essentially allegiance to the entire country and one identity alone to define one very unfortunate incident as far as france is concerned is the fact that there has been a lot of instability which france has witnessed over the years because of which a lot of time the constitution has been changed in fact what we're talking about is around the fifth constitution of france so a lot of times there have been upheavals because of which altogether the constitution has been changed that kind of instability is actually not a feature of the indian constitution in fact india needs to be credited at this point of time that we have managed to survive with the basic laws and framework even after 75 years and we've not had any situations of coup or political upheavals as let's say our contemporaries or our peers in the south asian region or african region or even south american region for that matter would have faced all right we've managed to sustain democratic principles have proper elections timely periodic elections all right there have been issues of course of uh, you know tampering and booth capturing and all of that and muscle power and money power but it has not really never really destroyed the fabric of either the elections or the constitution for that matter which is till date held as extremely sacrosanct in policy framing all right so in that sense that constitution is made sacred and even when there have been occasions of some uh, you know amendments which are being made to the constitution there have been the supreme court stepping in and curtailing those very cons uh, those very changes and amendments to the constitution all right especially the period during emergency and some of the effects which took place still that time also we managed to maintain the sanctity of the constitution so this kind of feature or this kind of an event which happened in france of continuous upheavals and revamping of the constitution is not something that 
we have seen in India. All right. So that's how we basically have an understanding of the Indian and the French constitution, a comparison of uh, their similarities as well as differences. I really hope if you have enjoyed the video, you're going to like it and also share it and subscribe it with your friends. Thank you so much.